Hey guys, welcome to my video on amiodarone and the thyroid. It's an essential for U.S. summer wheat preparation. So now, so amiodarone, as you know, is a drug that is used in AFib that has a rapid ventricular rate. So it's used to regulate the rhythm of AFib. And AFib coincidentally is a disorder that is present oftentimes in graves or any kind of hyperthyroidism. So it's possible you could have a patient who has graves or has a hyperthyroidism and who takes amiodarone and consequently again presents with thyroid dysfunction simply because they're on the amiodarone, not because the Graves or whatever disease is getting worse. So I'm going to first start off by saying that amiodarone has a high iodine content. Now that's important because I'm going to start off with the statement. Iodine is an integral part of T4 synthesis in the thyroid gland. And so if you're taking amiodarone and there's just a lot of amiodarone in your circulation, the fact that there's a lot of iodine in the circulation, so this is your circulation and this is a product of thyroid synthesis, which also goes in the circulation. So you have lots of iodine floating around. So this sends a signal that this reaction should not go forward. So it inhibits it because of the fact that you already have so much iodine in the periphery where this reaction goes. So that's something called the Wolf-Chaikoff effect. So what do you know? The thyroid hormones in this case, so I'm going to call it number one, I already just told you, you had a decrease in T4 and consequently T3 and your TSH is going to increase in response because your thyroid is not doing this. This is not, this is being in inhibited because there's so much iodine due to the amiodarone in the circulation. Now, if amiodarone starts to become toxic to the thyroid gland. So it starts to accumulate in the thyroid gland. So now in the gland itself, this is the thyroid gland, so you have the high iodine content drug and what it's going to do is, so this is our reaction. So this is with all the precursors this reaction is going to go forward because you have so much iodine on this side, you really want to do the iodination with the thyroxine and you want to, and it's going to cause an increase in output of your T4 and consequently your T3 because T4 is peripherally converted to T3. And that's going to cause a decrease in TSH. So what this is called is amiodarone induced thyrotoxicosis type 1. So AIT type 1. Okay. And this is a hyperthyroid state, hence it's AIT type 1 amiodarone-induced thyrotoxicosis.
AIT type 2 is when the cells are damaged. So again, amiodarone is entering the thyroid, but it's not it's acting in a way that damages the cells of the thyroid. So there's this destruction of these cells and it's going to spill out T3 and T4. So this looks and this mechanism sounds a lot like subacute thyroiditis because there's a destruction of the cells and an increase in the T3, T4 because it's spilling out into the blood. But in this case, you're also, you're going to have a definite decrease in TSH. So with subacute, it's kind of iffy. You may or may not have the decrease in TSH. But in this, it's found that, yeah, there is a decrease in TSH. And this is, again, called AIT type 2. So lastly, uh, I'm going to talk about this. And it, it looks, it looks, this looks like something we've seen before in the previous video that I made. T4 is peripherally converted to T3. That's a fact. And amiodarone can block this. And I've discussed another disease like this before called euthyroid sick syndrome. And indeed, the clinical, the lab findings in this are equal to the early stage of euthyroid sick syndrome. So you got T3 decreased and T4 TSH normal. But one difference is that this doesn't, there's no severe state in this. So remember in euthyroid sick syndrome, there's a severe state where then all three of them become decreased if the, the underlying illness is not resolved. So if you have this, remember that in your vignette, you're going to have somebody who has a history of treatment of AFib and probably treatment with amiodarone, whereas in euthyroid sick syndrome, you're going to have a patient who has had a severe viral illness or is, you know, in the ICU for some reason. And thanks a lot. Please subscribe to my channel and you've reached the end of my video.